place to park up here. They had a swimming pool for their employees. Broke my GoPro now. I think that was a Buster Keaton fall. Before I move on with our travels in Death Valley, I'm going to actually rewind just a bit to last week and uh, share a little bit more about the Golar Wash Panamint Valley area because these are things I didn't actually include in the video because it was off topic. That video was done for my class that I took, the Casey Neistat film class. And uh, so I wanted to share a little more information because I'm getting the impression that some people actually might wanna go there. And there was a lot of stuff and exploring that we did that we did not include. I also wanna share a comment that I got from a viewer. Her name is Heather. She has a channel called Travel Big, Live Small. And I'll link it down below. But she shared that she is a descendant of the Bennett family. And if you don't know who they are, they were one of, it was the Arcanes and the Bennetts who got stuck in Death Valley. There were quite a few families stuck, but they were stuck together. And it was Lewis Manley and John Rogers who rescued them. They left and came back. It took them a month to travel 400 miles round trip. This is the book that Lewis Manley wrote. Highly recommend it. Very interesting. I think I read it in high school or college. And so it's you know part of the reason I like Death Valley so much. Uh, if you want a short version, I'll try to find a link to this article. It's six pages long and it talks about the route that they took out of Death Valley. Um, over over the Panamints and then down into Trona and then to Los Angeles. Uh, so that's interesting as well. Now, if you're interested more in the man in the Charlie Manson side of things, then do pick up this book. This is called Desert Shadows, written by one of the park rangers. A very quick read, but it's full of details about how they track down these guys and their dogged pursuit of whoever had you know torched their equipment. They were going to find them. They, of course, did not, did not know anything about the relationship between the family and the murders in L.A. Uh, so this is really good to get, especially if you're going to visit Golar Wash, because it'll give you a much better idea of what the rangers and the, the six or eight law enforcement people that went up there, what they had to go through to catch these guys. Really interesting. And if you have any more questions, I actually didn't share everything for my brother's story. Some of it uh, maybe wasn't quite appropriate, but if we ever meet on the road, I'll be happy to share the rest of the story. In the meantime, we will now go back to Panamint Valley and I will share some more information about that area. When you leave the pavement of the Trona Wild Rose Road, it is a three and a half mile drive to Ballarat that any vehicle can do. But from Ballarat to the mouth of Golar Wash is a 16-mile dirt road that after about seven miles can rattle your fillings out. Our van is not four-wheel drive, but it does have a suspension upgrade and beefier tires. This means it sits a bit higher off the ground. So if you have that, you shouldn't have any problems with the washboard, the rocks, or the minor sandy spots. There is a great spot to camp at the mouth of Golar Wash, where you can park and either hike into the canyon or ride your fat tired e-bike. This is as far as we can go with our rig, which is only two wheel drive, but it did really well coming up this very steep road. And here we are at the entrance to Golar Wash. Get our stuff together and bikes down. Oh, and you can hear the donkeys down below. Pay attention to the weather because there was one section that still had some snow from the December storms. We had fun exploring old mining equipment along the way, especially the old Keystone Mining Claim that is now owned by a company called Bush Management Company. They have plans to start exploratory drilling again. This may change the character of the canyon. door when you leave. <laughs> this is weird, the stuff that's left over here. Looks like, uh, John, tell me what that stuff is. And then old mattresses. What is that material? 
Oh, okay, those gross mattresses. But let's walk up and check out the other buildings. The original mining claim was owned by Carl Mingle in 1935. His ashes and artificial leg are supposed to be buried on top of Mingle Pass. That's the same road where my brother ran into Tex Watson. Huh. Look at this. <laughs> There's a jar of whoop ass. <laughs> Sink. And what brand of refrigerator is that? I don't know. Oh, Keystone Mine. That's what this is called, the Keystone Mine. The Keystone went on to produce several million dollars in gold in the 1980s. I think that was a swimming pool. And you'd certainly need one up here in Death Valley. I think this is the shallow end. There are even stairs and everything. Look at this. And there are our bikes all the way down at the road. Look at that. There is very little traffic along the road. We saw only three vehicles the entire day, so be sure to carry a personal location device if you have one, because there's no cell service and GPS does not work well in these mountains. Oh. Oh. What happened? <laughs> I think that was a Buster Keaton fall. It's just slick, isn't it? It's well, yeah. yeah. There you go. Oh! There you go. <laughs> what a beautiful sight that is. Our bikes are a mess. Kind of a mess. The weather has changed. It has gotten very windy. It is very well known here to get windy. So we are going to first go back up toward Trona and catch some inner, some uh, cellular service so we can respond to people. We haven't had cell service in a few days. So we're gonna go up there, make sure people don't think we've fallen off the edge. And then we're gonna head back down here through Panamint Valley through stovepipe wells and uh, maybe do a hike and then see where the rest of the week takes us. First, John is gonna air up, and then we're gonna get out of Ballarat. At the last minute, we decided instead of going to Stovepipe, we turned left and went to Panamint Springs Resort, which was just a couple miles from the intersection because we're tired and it's windy and they have showers, no dump station, 30 bucks dry, $60 if you want hookups, but that's a little pricey. But tomorrow we can go check out Darwin Falls. We have a view of snow-capped Telescope Peak. Okay, what's the story on the showers? They're fine. They're uh, designed with open air hot oh. temperatures in mind, so it's gonna be a little chilly in there this time of year, but. Water's warm. So go now, not in the morning. Exactly. Okay. And this is the worst thing that happens in the morning. His coffee mug is in front of the curtain, which means it's a refrigerator up there. I don't like going up there. That was what a are moon. you doing watching me? That was a moon rise. <laughs> Here we go. 
named after Dr. Darwin French. He was an 1850s prospector. And there's supposed to be water here all year round. And it should be really good right now because we had such great rain in December. It's a one mile hike. Easy hike. It was a super cool hike, highly recommend it. It's only a two miles round trip. John has come up with the lyrics for a song for Owen to make. What are the lyrics, John? The RVer's dream is to be on the road. Wheels underneath the driving wheels, your home and abode. What they don't tell you though, is that all that relaxing can be exhausted. <laughs> Somehow that doesn't quite rhyme, but. Close it up, Owen will make it work. <laughs> I'll work on it. Yeah. <laughs> A few more lyrics. What was you got to dump the you tanks? You got to dump the tanks. You got to fill with water. You got to make sure you don't get caught doing something nutter. 